connection here is uh, illustrated by this diagram. To get to this point, you're going to go right x and up y, right? So that's x comma y. But the other way to locate this point is to have a radius, and then you rotate theta, that angle, to get to that point. Either way, you end up at the same spot. But the connection between these uh, variables is that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, right, from the Pythagorean theorem. And if you take the square to both sides, you can see that r equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. Also, we've got the tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent, so tangent of theta equals y over x. And if you take the tangent inverse of both sides, you can see that theta is equal to the tangent inverse of y over x. Furthermore, cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse, so let's write that down. Cosine of theta equals x over r. And if you multiply both sides by r, you can see that x is equal to r times the cosine of theta. And then the sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, which in this case is y over r. And again, if you multiply both sides by r, you can see that y is equal to r sine theta. So we're going to be using all these relationships to convert from polar to rectangular. So in our first example, you've got r equals 8 sine theta. So what we want to do is we want to get rid of the r's and the thetas. We just want to end up with x's and y's when we're all done. So the first thing that I would do here is multiply both sides by r. If we do that, we get r squared equals 8 r sine theta. Now you might be saying, hmm, how did you know how to do that? Part of it's experience, but also part of it's recognizing that if I have an r sine theta here, what does that equal? Well, you can see that's equal to y, so that eliminates that theta there, so we have 8y, and we also know that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, so let's do that substitution as well. Okay, so now when we get to this form, we've got the x's and y's, we've gotten rid of the r's and the thetas, but what you might recognize is that this is the equation of a circle. So you might want to take it one step further and put it into the standard form of the equation of a circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the 8y, Okay, and set this to zero. And then what we're going to do is we're going to complete the square. So we're going to take half of negative 8, which is negative 4. Negative 4 squared is 16. You want to add that 16 to both sides. Now when you factor this, you can see you're getting y minus 4 squared. Okay, and now it's in the standard form of the equation of a circle. The center is at 0, 4, and the radius is 4. So again, the goal is to get rid of r's and thetas, end up with x's and y's. So let's go to example 2 here. So theta equals pi over 6. Okay, meaning the angle is a 30 degree angle. Well, what you can do on this problem is you can take the tangent of both sides. Okay, so tangent of theta is equal to the tangent of pi over 6. Now, you know from your unit circle, okay, that over here at pi over 6, this is the coordinate square root 3 over 2, comma 1 half. And the tangent is the y value over the x value. So if you take y divided by x, you get square root 3 over 3 after you rationalize. Tangent of theta, you can see from our earlier discussion there, that's equal to y divided by x. And if we multiply both sides by x, you can see that y equals square root 3 over 3x. Now this should make sense to us because if we think about it, in polar form, okay, this is our polar graph paper here, right? You can see that the angle pi over 6 is going to be here, 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 and so on, depending on what the radius is. And so you can see what we're getting is we're getting a line when we connect those points, and that line has a slope of square root 3 over 3. So that's where this equation is coming from. It's like y equals mx plus b. The slope, the m, is square root 3 over 3. So both of these equations represent the same line. It's just that this is in polar, and uh, this one here is in rectangular. So let's go to example 3 now. r equals 5. Well, we know from previously here, we talked about r equals the square root of x squared plus y squared, so let's do that substitution. And then what you can do is you can square both sides to get rid of the square root. So if we square both sides, we get x squared plus y squared equals 25. And you can see this is the equation of a circle in rectangular form. This is the equation of a circle in polar form. Same graph, just two different ways of writing it. Last example, again, remember our goal is to get rid of the r and theta and just get x's and y's. Secant of theta is actually equal to the reciprocal of cosine. Okay, so that's 9 over cosine theta. If we multiply both sides by cosine theta, we get r cosine theta is equal to 9. And what does r cosine theta equal? Well, that equals x. So we've got x equals 9. So I hope that helps you how to understand how to convert from 
you know, one form to the, to the other. Uh, go ahead and review this video if you need to. Subscribe to the channel. Check out more math tutoring videos on my YouTube channel, Mario's Math Tutoring. And I look forward to helping you in the future math videos. I'll talk to you soon.